This is Betty Toodle. I am interviewing Joseph Kozlov for the Hastings Historical Society's Oral History Project on the Waterfront. Today is May 3rd, 1988, and we are in the Kozlov residence at 21 Cedar Street. All right, Joe, uh, before we get into the waterfront um, information, we'll give a little something about your background, uh, where you were born, and so on. Uh, I was born on 417 Warburton Avenue in 1921. I was a baby. I lived there for two years. Then I moved to Uniontown, 95 James Street, where I lived for 25 years with my mother, my father, two brothers and two sisters. In 1947, on November 30th, I married Susan Mignac. And uh, we operated a tavern at 8 Washington Avenue on Hastings and Hudson, New York. For uh, nine years, we were proprietors of the tavern, and uh, we had a good sports complex. We had uh, winning softball teams, basketball teams, bowling teams, and we were called uh, Susan's Home to <laughs> Champions. <laughs> uh, we, uh, after uh, leaving the bar, I, we moved from Hastings, and we moved to Lapeer Park for two years, and eventually I moved back into Uniontown at uh, 104 James Street. And then we built a house on 21 Cedar Street in Hastings, where we now reside, my wife and myself. Okay, Joe, we'll get to um, the waterfront topic. When did you um, go to work, and did you work in the I Hastings worked, Waterfront? I worked at Anaconda Wire and Cable Company from 1941 to 1942, and I went to the service for three and a half years into the Air Corps. When I came, I retired, well, I was discharged from the Air Corps as a staff sergeant. I returned to Hastings, and... Uh, Anaconda was on strike, so... What year was that? 1947. Uh, Anaconda was on strike, and the second day that I was out, the Hastings Southside Club burnt, and we spent the whole day fighting the fire. It was so cold, we had to chop the ice off our coats to get our coats off. The uh, Anaconda Union had free coffee and soup there, the taverns uh, gave us uh, alcoholic beverages to keep us warm, <laughs> and uh, we finally got the fire out, and we turned back to our quarters and had a good job packing our holes and getting all our equipment back in shape again. Mm -hmm. then, then I returned to work in Anaconda. But in the, during that period, I did collect $20 government insurance, plus I did have a job with the Steve Medrick Milk Company, which I made another $20, which gave me $40 a, a week, which wasn't a bad pay. <laughs> then uh, in uh, July of uh, 1947, Susan opened a tavern, and I worked for her. And on November 20th of 1947, we were married, and we ran the saloon for nine years, and we had a wonderful relationship. I never called a police department for an argument or a fight in nine years that I was there. My name was never, um, Susan's name was never on the blotter. The people were wonderful. All the guys were great. They played ball for us, they worked for us, and they done everything that we wanted them to do. So we had a... Mm -hmm. and a wonderful relationship on Washington Avenue. Mm -hmm. And I can say from there we moved to Napier Park for two years and I got involved in the oil business with uh, William Gorman and myself. It was a Gorman and Kozlop oil company. I worked with uh, Bill Gorman for a few years and then Bill retired and I took over the oil business myself and I worked in the oil business until I had a heart problem. I had to give up uh, my business because I had a triple bypass operation and 
March of 1982, which was done in Deborah, New Jersey. From then, then I pulled through the operation, thank God, I had a triple bypass, and I retired and took it easy from then on. <laughs> uh, so then uh, you didn't work that long at Anaconda, did you? No, I just, uh, I put uh, one year in Anaconda, and then before I went into the service, about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Then I came back and I worked again for a little while, and uh, I became I became involved with this, what they call den sheet, and uh, I worked on these rollers, and I tested cable. In the meantime, I broke out with a rash, and uh, it was due to the asbestos in the cable, and I had to be treated many, many months for uh, sort of an asbestos poisoning. And they gave me medication, and... Uh, also, x-ray treatments to my face to clear up uh, my face. It was a mess. I was afraid to go any place. No. Did Anaconda pay for all these medical treatments? Or? I finally did get paid something like $500 compensation, which was oh. compared nothing to what I went through and you know, all the tough times I had. And then finally gave me some car fare for <laughs> going down there. Which I was fighting for more money, and they gave me a few pennies for car fare. Well, that's interesting. That was that part and uh, that was my days and I was after I broke out they sent me down to what they call a health farm which was the carpenter shop I worked in the woodworking shop there <laughs> making real sides but then they needed a chauffeur part-time so I was moved up to the office and I was a chauffeur for the anaconda executives and then uh, I had gone into the service and when I came back I wasn't a chauffeur anymore. I was back down in the carpenter shop and I worked there until I left Anaconda. And what year was that you left Anaconda? Uh, 1947. Uh -huh. And that's when you started up with the... Um, we went to the barber's the bar. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> and a lot of these questions wouldn't relate to what you've already answered about the job-related illness yeah. from Anaconda. Um, did you... When, um, get any kind of pension from Anaconda when you... No, were? I didn't get a pension. I wasn't there long enough. Yeah, all right. Okay. And you wouldn't have uh, be able to answer anything about these um, I the did union belong activities. To, I did belong to the union, uh -huh. but I was just a member. I wasn't any executive or anything. Uh -huh. And all the while I was there, I was a member of the union. Um, well, we'll get to the uh, social um, life. <laughs> What were your principal residences while you worked on the waterfront? Well, it was just 8 Washington Avenue. 8 Washington, uh-huh. Well, actually, I lived at 95 James Street, and I used to, you know, go to work and back. My father and my brother and uh, two brothers, John and Frank, both worked in Anaconda, so the four of us would ride to work every day, usually, if we were on the same shift, and then we would wait for one another. We stopped at different half-hour shifts and we wait for them one another to drive each other home. Um, did you have a garden in your home? Oh yes, I, I, <laughs> I love my gardening. <laughs> I worked every day after work in the summertime keeping the garden in good shape, weeding and planting. Uh -huh. I grew vegetables and lettuce and carrots, string beans, and I had a beautiful flower garden at my mother's house at 95 James Street. Uh -huh. How would you describe your local neighborhood, um, <clears throat> the boundaries and uh, well, the boundaries were one of the sections of the village, you know. The sections of the village. Well, I grew up in Uniontown. I was only a baby when I was born in Hastings, and it was a beautiful spot. I joined the volunteer fire department in 1939. This year, I'll have 50 years as a fireman, but only 47 were active because. In those days, we were 18 years old. We had to be an uh, associate member for three years. And uh, I stuck with the company, and I became a captain, a, a lieutenant, a lieutenant, and a captain. Oh. And I had a good relationship with all the guys. I used to work hard to help put on parties and uh, clam bakes and uh, dances. And we had wonderful times in Uniontown. I don't re <laughs> regret one day of it. Really, no. really great. Uh -huh. um. <clears throat> uh, did the uh, other people use the Uniontown Firehouse for social me meetings? Or? In those days, yes, we had the uh, Lady Foresters. They were an old outfit of Uniontown women that uh, had uh, meetings there. Uh, I think 
I'm not too sure, but that Lucy Coogan was uh, one of the head people and uh, all the local residents like uh, my mother, Mrs. Kozlop, and uh, Mrs. Questo, Mrs. Matejcik, and uh, many other women that I just don't recall right now belong to the Lady Forresters, and we gave them that firehouse free every month but uh, at the end of the year, they would make a donation to us. Oh. oh. And the... Uh, what was the purpose of the group? I, uh, they just... They, uh, they got together. They had, like, a, a uh, society, which they put in so much money per month, and they had, like, an insurance fund out of it. Oh. It was called Lady Foresters of America. That's what I was wondering, what the Foresters was. Uh, yeah. The, mm -hmm. And uh, other people used the firehouse, this, the... Uh, Union Town Association, and then we had uh, people that we had uh, meetings to uh, try and get the school board to hold the taxes down. We had many meetings there, and uh, I had happened to be a chairman of a fire company, so I got involved in that. I got it started, and it, uh, finally uh, we got a little bit too old. I had a heart attack, and I had to have a, my triple bypass operation, so I had to get out of all of that stuff slow down. Was your section of town given a name? Well, it was. The yeah, the name Union. was gave, given as Union Town, but where it came from, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> That's what the historical society is trying to find out, what uh, Union Town. Years ago, the old ball field at the end of <laughs> Rose Street, uh, people used to come up in trolleys from Yonkers, and they used to have like a Coney Island, like a park there, <coughs> and they had good times there. My, I just know this from what my father told me. And this uh, was where the Union Town Park is now? Right now, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, they had many a good time there. And then they used to bring in ball teams from New York to play Union Town. <laughs> and uh, a lot of them were colored players and they were real comedians. Everybody enjoyed them. <laughs> uh <-huh. clears throat> some of these questions you already have answered. Um, one of them uh, was, uh, what were the most important family activities you shared? You know, your mother, father, and... Well, brothers well, we always we, uh, really loved the mother and father. Mm -hmm. My father and uh, us three boys always went out together. Uh -huh. We were always together. We are a real, real team. Uh -huh. You saw Pop, you saw Frankie, Johnny, and Joey. Mm. Uh, did you go on picnics? Or well, I guess yes, when we were young, uh, many, not many people had cars, and we used mm -hmm. to go to Blue Mountain Lake in Peekskill with the family. Oh and spend the Sunday there with the Rusnak family, the Kozlov family, the Costo family. All of us had a good time. That was, uh -huh. was there, a, what language was spoken at home? Well, my sister and I, my and I, the youngest one, my parents spoke English to us, but my oldest, my brother John, my brother Frank, and uh, my sister Anna, my mother and father spoke Czechoslovak, Slovak to them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <coughs> Some of these other questions you answered. Uh, <clears throat> did your family stay in Hastings? Yes. Uh, well, when my I was born in Hastings. My family was there all our life, and we stayed there all our life. And my mother, and my father used to go down to the Uniontown Host Company to all the dances, and they would call the mom and papa firehouse. <laughs> um, now the they refer to the whistle on the waterfront. Did you hear that whistle at yes, home? Yes, they there? had. Uh, Every night at 9 o'clock, they had a whistle down there at Anaconda. We had to get off the street when we were kids. If we didn't, the police, if they came to Uniontown, it was kind of far out of the way. There weren't many cars. And uh, they would chase us off the street, or if they saw us in the village or by the uh -huh. school, any place, they would chase us home at 9 o'clock. That was our curfew. Uh, did uh, you attend Hastings schools? Yes, I went to Hastings School for 12 years. I started at kindergarten and went through high school. What uh, were the dates, do you recall? Oh, I, I finished, let's see, 1939, so I started, oh boy. 35? <laughs> no, it would be 20-something, 1926, I would say. Okay, and you finished in 39, you said? Uh, Did your parents or, uh, attend any of the Hastings schools? No, my father was born in Slovakia, and my mother was born in Yonkers, New York. Oh. 
What kinds of subjects did you study in school? Well, I wanted to go with college entrance. I wanted to go to West Point, but the uh, Mrs. Davy and figured that I wasn't that bright to <laughs> go to <laughs> West Point because my friend Joe Myers, he wanted to go to West Point, so we took a boat to go together. So uh, they told me to take an industrial arts course, so to be different, I took a commercial course. And I took, uh, well, arithmetic, English, typing, no shorthand. Mm -hmm. And I graduated, thank God, with <laughs> passing grades. Mm -hmm. Did you have any favorite teachers? Oh, yes, we had a, a, her name was Miss Welsh, and she got married, her name was Miss Hitchcock, Mrs. Hitchcock. She was a wonderful teacher, she was our favorite. She's a little short girl like me. <laughs> and <laughs> she had a couple of favorites, Georgie Rusnak, myself, and a few other boys. Uh, did you study the history of Hastings when you were in school? No, we didn't have uh, uh, much of that uh, in school work. You know, we, we, we learned most from our father, mm -hmm. our, uh, when he worked in Anaconda, certain days a week when they were slow, they would send the men up the Riviera Manor section to work on the roads to fix the village up there and get the place in shape when they built the houses up there. I don't know what Anaconda had to do with it because, well, when they, my dad first started there, it was National Conduit Wire and Cable, then it became American Brass, then it became Anaconda Wire and Cable Company. So he spent 50 years there. And he was given a trophy, uh, not a trophy, but a watch at Smith's Farm at a dinner in 1952. And uh, he uh, retired and he, he didn't live too many years after that. <clears throat> um, did you join school athletic teams? Yes, I played base, high school baseball, high school basketball while I was in my uh, high school years. And then after high school, uh, we had, uh, or during high school, we had the village leagues that we played during the summertime, Hastings Recreation League, basketball and baseball. And then John Luck was our uh, Hastings Recreation Director. And we had to walk from Uniontown to <laughs> Hastings to play a game. By the time we got there, we were tired. <laughs> and then we used to play strictly hardball, but then he changed to softball, which we didn't like <coughs> in Uniontown because hardball was our game, and it, I believe it did hurt some of the players. They could have been good ball players, but using that big ball outside of the small ball made a big difference. Mm. Do you remember who some of your teammates were? Oh, yeah. John Neely, uh, Sonny Burke, Bobby Wright, Right. Well. Stevie Sunita. Well, um, now we get to the churches or temples. Were you a member of any church or temple? Which one? Well, we were married in uh, Holy Trinity Church in Yonkers, New York, in 1947. But uh, we moved, since we moved, since I got married and moved to Hastings, we started going to St. Stanislaus Casca Church uh, with the Reverend Vincent Daskevich. Then, after Father D passed away, uh, Father Ed Fabashinsky from Yonkers took over. And uh, he had the church for some six years, and he got transferred to Yonkers. And then uh, Father uh, Father Sarama became the pastor, and he made me trustee. And I'm still a trustee today. That's some 15 years or so. Mm -hmm. And I help now. I help uh, after Father Sarama, Father. Father Fabashinsky came back to Yonkers and became on senior, but then he became ill and had to retire. So Father Keneally took off from St. Matthew's for three or four months, and uh, we were sort of kind of ran a church for him, me and uh, Stephen Rapoli, the other trustee. Then Father McCory is here now, and I still, I'm still a trustee with him, and I work good with him, and so does Steve Rapoli. And we seem to be doing fine, although we're 
I have less masses, but we're still fighting to keep here in Hastings and keep our little church going. Uh, were there ever religious services held at the waterfront? That you to my knowledge, no. The only thing I could say, like when our boat club had an installation uh, or our opening day in the summertime, Father Monsignor Fabashinsky would come down and bless the oh. the uh, boat club and the basin and all the people there. So since he's left, we haven't had that anymore. Mm. <clears throat> well, I think some of these things you've answered. Like, where did you play when you were young? In the street, a playground? Or no, a we had a playground. Well, everybody had a basket in our backyard. We played basketball. <laughs> um, where did you spend summers during the school years? In Hastings? Uh, Usually, but uh, my parents had uh, friends up in, well, they were like our godparents up in Hudson, New York, by name of Missouri. They had lived here in Hastings in the section they what they call the gold mine off of uh, Soma River Road. And uh, somebody came there and shot some uh, pellets into the earth, and uh, they said they discovered gold. So some <laughs> of these poor people took out all kind of stocks and shares and uh, bought stuff in uh, this gold mine and they lost all their money. There also was another thing that happened that the uh, Hudson Tire Company had uh, built a place down here on Nepahan Avenue, now close to the old, the A&P there, and they had started to build. They really built a building, but somehow somebody got in there that ruined their tire corp and uh, people lost all their money. My father was one of the persons that lost money in that uh, Hudson Tire Company. And uh, that, that, that went under. Mm -hmm. And these people from Hudson that I mentioned that moved to Hudson, that lived up the gold mine, they were our godparents. And we would go there summertime to help uh, put the hay in the farm. And then it was healthy for us. My brother had mm -hmm. uh, bronchitis, and he had to get rid of it. So they sent him up there for the summer. Then I had an uncle that had a place in Cooney Island. He would take us out there once in a while in the summertime. And otherwise, uh, we went down the Hudson River and caught bushels of crab, but it's crabs at the time. At that time, the crabs were running so good, you went down there for an hour or two and you got a bushel of crabs, and the toughest part was getting them home to Uniontown because we had to climb up a big bank. It was all sand bank, and up through there, and up through the Graham School into Tompkins Avenue to Uniontown. And on the way home, we'd try to sell the crabs for a quarter, 35 cents a dozen. So we'd make a few dollars for ourselves. Uh -huh. If we had a nickel between us, the one that had the nickel would take the bus home with the crabs. <laughs> <laughs> that was my brother Frank. He always took the crabs home, and the crabs shells used to stick them in his back. He'd come home, he'd have all holes in his back. <laughs> well, you've already answered the questions about recreation on the river. Did you use the river for recreation is the well, question. as I got older and after I had this uh, itch down at the Anaconda, <laughs> the $500 I got out of that, I bought a boat, an inboard boat out in Hudson Park, near Shell. My brother John and I brought it around with uh, Mike with, with, Toski, with Koski to Hastings, and we used that at the Pioneer Boat Club for crabbing and parties. We had many a good time on them. We had sandwiches and beer, and we had... Uh, Many a good sail, many a good time. And then we fished on it, and we crabbed on it. It was really something every summer. To, we had the boat to look forward to till the boat rotted, so we had to sell it. Uh, the next question about the river is the industrial life. Did the company or village dump materials into the river? What kind? How often? Did anyone object to this practice? <laughs> well, not that we know of. I know that uh, I believe Zinsis was fine for dumping chemicals in, like, Billy Newell and I worked in the carpentry shop, so we could see those things, and we saw, like I said, the red rats, blue rats, <laughs> in the garbage and all that. Then uh, Anaconda was losing some copper dust, and I think they were also fined for that because it was a brown thing. Because every Sunday morning, the crew from the rod mill that worked uh, the rods and thinned them out, all the dust would drop into these what they call pits, and water got into those pits somehow, and that would... Uh, uh, flow into the Hudson River and make it all brown. And uh, a few times there we had those copper barges come in and the barge captains were on them and they would move the barges 
by rope, and they would slide them around with the tide, but a couple of times the barges got through, and those poor captains went down the river by themselves till somebody picked up the boats and towed them back in, and of course, Anna kind of had to pay for throwing them back in. So that was uh, uh, quite a comedy, watching that and working on it. <laughs> what did you feel about working so close to the river? Well, working close to the river was beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> I always loved the river. I still do. And uh, we had uh, we had no money, so that was our place to bathe mm -hmm. and crab and uh, whatever we could do for uh, spend the summer as kids, you know. Mm -hmm. Plus, when we were home, we had to work around the houses. We had our jobs. That had to be done first. We had to work in the garden, work in the yard. I cleaned uh, what we would call had a porch outside. We stored things. And I going down the cellar was our pantry every Saturday. Even on Saturdays when I went to the golf course, I went uh, walked up there three, three and a half miles, and I around the course three, three and a half miles, sometime twice. Walk home, I still had my work to do when I got home. I got a dollar around, and if we got a tip, it was nice. Or if we went to the 11th hole, we had a refreshment stand. If they, the person playing would buy you something to eat, a hot dog or soda, it was really appreciated. But it was, we were kept busy. Then uh, after became a little old, I started delivering papers. We had the statesman route. Well, them days was the Yonkers Herald. And then uh, we also had the news and the times. We worked, we had two routes. We worked hard making money because, like I say, people didn't have any money in those days. So we had to help pitch in and help the families. Uh, do you visit the waterfront today? Yes, I still belong to Pioneer Boat Club. I was a trustee there for eight years. And then I wasn't supposed to have two terms in a row, but uh, they made a mistake and gave it to me. In fact, I almost could have got a third one, but I figured I had enough time. And then I, right now, I'm uh, still a member, but I'm a retired member, mm -hmm. non-working, uh, non non-paying member now, because I have over 15 years, and I have, I'm 67 years old. At 65, you, you can uh, mm -hmm. be retired and be a uh, permanent member. Well, Joe, I think you've pretty well covered all the questions that I have on here. I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Betty. Thanks for coming and over. It was been enjoyable. Thank you very much.